Hi, I'm Taylor Hales. I'm here in Studio B at Electrical Audio, and today I'm gonna to talk about tape degradation and how to bake and transfer your analog audio tapes. So analog audio tape has two or three main layers. There's the base film, which since the 1970s has been polyester or PET. Onto that base film, there's at least a magnetic coating on the inside of your tape. The mag coating layer is slightly brownish in color and a little bit shiny. The mag coating is where the analog of your audio is actually written. On the back side of your tape is your back coating, if your tape is back coated. Your back coating will be a little bit darker and more matte in color. The back coating has a few different functions. It serves to prevent the buildup of static and prevents print through, and it also adds some strength to your tape. The problem is that the PET base will absorb water through the humidity of its storage environment, and the two coatings are susceptible to degradation through exposure to water. The result of this process of hydrolysis is the tape goes from a strong and resilient form to a rubbery, sticky one. If you play back a tape that's been degraded in this way, you risk damage to the tape itself and to your machine. The remedy for this is that you bake a tape at a low temperature for a long period of time. Before you put your tapes in the oven, it's good to establish whether they need to be baked. First and foremost, check the composition of your tape. If it's a cellulose acetate base film, it does not need to be baked, and actually it's flammable, so don't bake those tapes. If your tape is a polyester PET base film tape, you can do a series of playback and wind tests to determine whether it needs to be baked. So go ahead and mount up that tape. So first, anytime you mount up a tape, you always want to clean your machine and wipe down your heads with alcohol. You can also clean the lifters and any other pieces that are in the tape path that are non-rubber. Your first test will be a simple wine test. So just go ahead and spool up your tape. And do the slowest speed library wind you can for a short section of the tape, maybe 50 to 100 feet. If you hear the tape shearing apart from itself, if you hear a very loud scraping sound, or even this little squealing sound that you can hear, you probably want to bake your tape. Otherwise, go into edit mode or detention your tape otherwise, and then check the lifters to see if there's buildup on the lifters themselves. You want to check your lifters to see if there's any tape bits that have shed off or kind of sticky residue that's formed on the lifters themselves. You want to do this before you do any playback just so that you don't even risk putting tape over the heads that's sticky. If your lifters and the rest of your tape path are clean, you can go ahead and reestablish tension on your tape. And then play back a short section, maybe 50 to 100 feet. And then wipe your heads with alcohol. And check for any residue or tape pieces that have shed off on your Q-tip. If they have, it's time to bake the tape. If not, you're good to move on. You can go ahead and retension your tape, and then you're gonna wind back a little bit further and play just a slightly longer section of the tape. You always want a library wine too. Do the gentlest wine that you possibly can on your machine. So for this run through, play maybe a few hundred feet of tape. And then again, you're gonna detension your tape and clean your heads. And if you see stickiness or residue, Time to bake that tape. If they're clean, you can move on. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now that we've arrived at the very inside of the reel, we're gonna play a short section and then again, clean down the heads with isopropyl alcohol and just look out for sticky tape particles that have come off on the heads. And if you see any, it's time to bake. So after you've played back a section of the inside of your tape, you can go ahead and wipe down your heads one last time with alcohol and you're following the same pattern that we've established here. You're just wiping the heads and then looking at your Q-tip and trying to see if you see any discoloration or tape fragments that have flaked off onto the Q-tip. If you see anything on the Q-tip, it's time to bake the tape. But at this point, if the Q-tip is clean, you can go ahead and transfer the tape. Once you've determined that your tape needs baking, you have to find an oven that's suitable for baking tape specifically. Do not use a conventional oven. At Electrical Audio, we use this food dehydrator, which is suitable for tape for a couple good reasons. First, it can do a low temperature, way lower than a conventional oven. And also, it keeps the air inside the oven circulating to maintain a consistent temperature throughout the volume of the oven. At Electrical, our first bake is always for 24 hours at a temperature of 130 degrees. So go ahead and load your tape up. and set the temperature and the time. And after this 24 hours of baking, you wanna let your tape rest for another full 24 hours before putting it up on a machine for transfer. Once your first bake is done, go ahead and grab your tape out of the oven. And be sure to also grab any boxes or documentation that accompanied the reel when you took it in. The first thing that you're going to do is redo the full kind of series of tests that we did for stickiness and tape shed. So put your tape back on the machine and just redo all of those tests. And at any point, if you notice any stickiness or sheddiness anywhere in the tape path, redo your bake, but do it for 48 hours. So double the amount of time that you did your initial bake for, and then again, let it rest for 24 hours before attempting your transfer. If you do the suite of tests and there's no stickiness anywhere in the tape path, you're good to go ahead and start your transfer.